Mr. Alexander's bloods. Hmm, electrolytes have normalized. Looks like he's ready for theater. Problem? He's having second thoughts about more surgery. What's a common reaction after a Whipple's? Given the nature of his cancer, surgery won't change his prognosis. It'll give him another year. At the most. And without surgery, his gastric system will completely obstruct, leading to malnutrition, dehydration, vomiting, and continual risk of aspiration pneumonia. Oh, but as an alternative to surgery, there's intravenous feeding or subcut fluids to consider, matched with pain relief. A palliative surgery is performed to improve a patient's quality of life, which is what we're going to do for Mr. Alexander. Anything else? Good. We'll be taking over this case from here on in. You can chase up the endoscopy report on Mrs. Locke. He tried to date. And it's still a good thing that you listened to Mr. Alexander and treated him with respect. He's Dr. Jones' patient now. Hey. Whatever. You don't seriously expect me to be all buddy-buddy with you after the way you went off at me? No, look, yesterday I'm, I was being a bit of a jerk, right? but I'm sorry. But it's the level three stuff it's stressing me out more than I thought. I just don't want to screw it up. Here's an idea. Try keeping your temper under control. I know. It's just... The more I try, the, the more I get stressed, the less people trust me. Do you think Scotty would have promoted you if he thought you went up to it? Sort your temper out and stop getting so over-involved with patients. You'll get there. You're right, by the way. About what? About Patsy reminding me of my gran. I know you're supposed to keep your personal feelings aside, but... I couldn't help it. It happens. As long as it's not too often. And try going easy on yourself once in a while. Thanks, Alice. You're a mate. Okay, Tony will sort you out with a physio appointment. Bye now. Chris, how can I help you? My meeting with the DHB this morning was very interesting. Apparently concern was expressed about the toll my personal life is taking on my performance. I see. Any idea who might have raised this concern? Well, if you're suggesting it was me, you'd be wrong. Sorry, but your personal drama is all over the hospital. It was only a matter of time before the DHB got wind, Chris. It doesn't explain the whispers about me losing focus, though, does it? Right. If there's any doubt in your mind, I made it clear you were doing a brilliant job under difficult circumstances. Regardless of the circumstances, I have continued to deliver as CEO. And in case there is any doubt in your mind, I will continue to deliver. Right. May I make a suggestion? You greenlight some of my recommendations. It'll make both the DHB and the staff very happy. I really don't need to be told how to do that. And I'll be the judge about what's best for this hospital. Thank you. Clear me out, please. I can see now that I was probably quite insensitive about the Asian Health Initiative. So I just wanted to... Scotty, I have phones for you. Okay. Later. Please tell me I have nothing to worry about. I owe my patient the courtesy of an explanation. Be careful. If Justine finds I will do what I think is right for my patient, regardless of the consequences. Yes, that'll be fine. Thank you. Hi, it's Morgan, isn't it? Yes. Detective Lara Wade. You got a minute? I was just on my way. To I this. won't take long. Joey Henderson, you're pursuing a relationship with him, is that correct? Yes or no? Um, oh, I'm not, I'm not sure. You do like him, though? Wow, I guess no one around here gets to have any secrets anymore. Can I ask why you need to know? How was your evening with Joey the other night? Fine. It was, it was fun. Fun. You did seem to leave fairly early, though. Why was that? I don't understand why that It's is. a fairly simple question, isn't it? We just didn't want to, you know... Didn't want to what? Rush things. By things you mean sex. <laughs> didn't want to or couldn't? Sorry? Is the reason you didn't have sex because Joey couldn't perform? No. It, it just didn't happen because... I don't know why you're asking me. You need to be very careful. Excuse me? Around Joey. Why? We're really good friends. What do you say? 
Just be very careful. Whatever you do, avoid being alone with him. Here. Next week's theatre list. And the highlighted operations? Are the ones I'll be performing myself. As you can see, that already includes the esophago gastrectomy. What? You picked up telepathy while you're away? <laughs> Let's just say my surgical muscles could use a good workout. And there was me thinking I'd have to rough you up a bit. Well, that might have worked when Callum was in charge. <laughs> Perhaps I've spoiled your fun. Give me a CEO with a scalpel any day. <laughs> Mr. Alexander, as well as can be expected, I guess. He was glad I took the time to talk to him. Is he still rejecting the idea of surgery? He hasn't yet made a decision. Mrs. Locke's endoscopy report, it's late. Her results haven't come through yet. Well, chase them up then. What have you been doing all afternoon? I spoke to Mr. Alexander about his surgery. I know. I just spoke to him. Dinesh only wanted to follow through. He thought it was important to put Mr. Alexander at ease. Actually, it's a good job he did. He's decided to go ahead with the surgery. See, it having a doctor with heart restored his faith somewhat. Endoscopy report, stat. Of course. Can you believe it? I thought she was going to rip your head off. I thought she was going to do more than that. Uh, it took spine to stick to your principles. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> oh, sorry. Sorry. Not allowed. But we're still friends? Yes. Always, I hope. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, yeah, sure. This request for a monitoring bed. Oh, I knew it. Knew what? That Callum's promise was too good to be true. As soon as you got back, you'd tell us no way. Ah, oh, well, at least we tried. And we did actually manage to get a portable ventilator and some new pulse oximeters in your absence. You finished? Pretty much, yeah. I came down to say order it. Are you serious? Yes, there's obviously a need. Makes sense. It was Callum. He guilted you into it. <laughs> no, this was my decision. Callum simply reminded me what a good idea it was. Yeah, but if Callum hadn't started dishing out all the goodies, then you wouldn't feel the need to do uh, so. Yeah, OK, Potts, pull your head in. Now, Chris okaying a monitoring bed is the best news we have had in a very long time. Yes? Yes. Sorry. Already forgotten. <laughs> I'll just put you through. These need to go out tonight. Doctor. Oh, wait. I totally forgot. Brenda's son, Lachlan, couriered me this. There are some emails St. Saviour's Hospital sent to her after she died. They might be to do with Brenda's research. Anyway, I thought you might want to check it out. Oh, sorry, I should have got it to you earlier. Oh, no worries. Thanks. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Better shake a leg. Audience with him upstairs. Shanti, please don't run away. Are you sure you don't have something more important to do, like take a phone call? About the Asian Health Initiative. I have no idea what it's like to be a new immigrant or what it's like to make sense of the health system as an outsider. And I do respect your opinion. Even though last night I did a pretty good impersonation of a complete jerk who didn't, please accept my apology. Of course I do. All this silly fighting, and why? Because we have to try extra hard to prove what a perfect couple we are? Or maybe we just need to relax and accept that there are some things we're going to disagree on. I think you're right. It will get easier. It already is. Dinesh is out of our hair. From now on, it's just you and me. I am so glad that you agree with me, Chris. I guarantee it will save us a bundle. Well, in that case, I'll definitely look into it. Thank you, Yvonne. No, no, thank you. First day back and she's already pestering you with petty nonsense. Honestly, some people have no sense of boundaries. Uh, Callum established an open-door policy while I was away, I see. Don't worry, I'll send off an email this afternoon and nip it in the bud. Uh, no, um, I think Callum might have been on to something. It's important for all staff to have a voice, not just management. Between you and me, I'm beginning to think I've let go of the reins in a few areas. That is totally untrue. Look at everything you've had to contend with. 
a serial killer. Tony taking Harry, a car crash, your brother. Throughout that whole time, you have led this hospital admirably. But perhaps not effectively. Nobody could handle everything you've had to deal with and still have the energy to run this place. Nobody. You're exactly right. Oh, no, that's not I mean, what I mean. Nobody could handle all of that, and obviously, I haven't. Teresa Salto, nursing manager, please. Can you tell me a better time to call her then? It's James Scott from Shortland Street Hospital in New Zealand. Could you get her to call me back then, please? Tell her it's urgent. It was time we caught up. Sorry, just on my way out. No, it won't take long. I don't want to keep the policeman in the car outside waiting. I had two interesting conversations today. Would you like to know who I spoke to? Not really. One was your mother, and the other was Morgan Braithwaite. So tell me, how do you think your date with Morgan went? She tells me you guys had a nice time. Yeah, we did. Only, I got a funny feeling she was hiding something. And I have a pretty good idea what that was. Oh, yeah? Call it feminine intuition, but I think Morgan was disappointed. Care to guess what she was disappointed in? No? Shall I tell you my theory? All right, then. I think Morgan was disappointed that you couldn't get it up. What do you think about that? I think you have no idea what you're talking about. Don't I? What lies did my mum tell you about me? Actually, she was rather reluctant to discuss you. She did tell me a couple of interesting stories, though. Like the time you started a fire at your primary school. That wasn't me. Your mother thought it was. She was wrong. Wouldn't be the first time, either. How about your neighbour that used to bully you? Now, is that why you drowned his cat? I did not. No way. Have you ever heard of the McDonald's triad, Joey? It's a theory that suggests pyromania, cruelty to animals, and bedwetting beyond an age where it doesn't normally happen, all point to psychopathic behaviour in adulthood. Did you? Did I what? Wet your bed. Were you still doing it when you were ten? Kath couldn't tell me, because she wasn't there then. If your grandmother and father were around, I could ask them, but they're not, are they? All right. There it is. Get out of my house. I've got your number. You can't keep harassing me like this. You're so sure I'm the sicko who's killing all these women. Then where is your evidence? Huh? Where is it? Oh, I'll find it. And I'm getting closer by the minute. We are back in Shorten Street on Monday at midday and the perfect cure to those September blues is the return of the Late Late Show. Ryan's back at the helm tonight at 25 to 10. Julia's erratic.